Hello and welcome back to Don Bennett's Drum Vault. Uh, today we're here to talk about another really spectacular collection. That is uh, the drum collection of Paul Jamo Jameson. Uh, Jamo, as he is known to virtually everybody in the recording industry, has been a extremely popular uh, drum tech and uh, studio rental operator uh, in Los Angeles for decades. I mean, starting in the 70s. Uh, really, he started uh, being a drum tech long before there really even was such a thing uh, and uh, sort of helped create the industry of, of drum teching. So JMO is known by virtually everybody in the music industry. Any conversation in Los Angeles regarding drums or drum rentals uh, or drum teching um, just rarely occurs without JMO's name coming up. He's worked with, I mean, a staggering list of the greatest drummers and artists uh, in the world. Jeff Picaro, Steve Smith, Mick Fleetwood, Guns N' Roses. I mean, I am barely scratching the surface. Uh, really, the, the A-list of the recording industry in Los Angeles, and he's there. What JMO did, in addition to being a drum tech who would, you know, do cartage and go to recording studios and set up drums and tune drums and help get great drum sounds for amazing albums. Uh, in addition to that, he also had a studio rental company where he rented uh, predominantly drums, but also a full range of guitars, amps, basses, keyboards, um, anything you would need uh, to do recording sessions. Paul, JMO, was the go-to guy for lots and lots of the top engineers and producers. Uh, I mean, Mark Ronson, Al Schmidt. I mean, I could go on and on and on. It'd be, it would be all of the A-list producers and engineers uh, in uh, Los Angeles. For so many of those guys, Paul was the go-to guy. So Paul had a huge collection of musical instruments. Uh, he had a massive collection of drums. Uh, I mean, these would be drums from anywhere from modern drums to vintage drums. What was unique about JMO's drums is while there are some really amazing, beautiful vintage drums in this collection, uh, the bulk of what his collection are uh, are really great workhorse drums that have been studio tested and proven on countless major hit recordings. So, you know, uh, some of them look like workhorses. You know, some, were, some of them are a little dusty. He may have done some modification on them. He basically made them into drums that record extremely well. And I think that's probably one of the most interesting things about the gear in his collection is that this is all guaranteed stuff that has been field tested, studio tested, and proven itself on some of the biggest recordings of all time. Um, and it's just, they're playing great sounding drums and musical instruments. Some of the instruments he's got are things like the Gretsch drum set that was used by Guns N' Roses on Appetite for Destruction, a, you know, a monumental album. And there is the Gretsch drum set that created that, the vintage Ludwig brass snare that was on every track. Uh, it's hard to argue with uh, items like that that have had uh, made such an impact. Uh, the same Gretsch drums Phil Collins used uh, and uh, many, many other artists. There's Jeff Picaro's drums. Jeff and JMO had a long, long relationship. They were very close friends and JMO was Jeff's tech 
for many, many years. Uh, besides just teching on Toto tours and Toto sessions and for Jeff Picaro in the studio, uh, JMO created, devised, and, and ultimately produced the Paul Jameson Pearl Rack, which uh, you know became known as the Picaro Rack or the or, or the Paul Jameson Rack, but really helped put the whole concept of a drum rack on the map, and that is uh, that's an item that is still in production today and still uh, very very popular. In the collection also is the uh, what JMO calls the Rosanna set. The set that Jeff Beccaro used to record Toto 4, their biggest album, the one that had Rosanna, the one that had Africa on it, um, and uh, there's the set, the Yamaha. This would be a pre-recording custom, which at that time would be called 9000 series. Uh, I mean, there's the set that uh, laid the groundwork for that album and really set a standard for recording drums that is still there today. And speaking of Jeff Picaro, uh, JMO is mentioned countless times in this great book about Jeff Picaro by Robin Flans that's uh, put out by Hudson Music. The book's called It's About Time and a uh, great story about Jeff Picaro his life and you'll see Paul Jameson, Jamo, uh, you'll see him mentioned many, many times throughout the book and there's lots of pictures of uh, Jamo in there uh, as well. You'll see another one of Jeff Picaro's set that was specifically made for him by the Pearl Drum Company in Bird's Eye Maple, a uh, complete set in an entire range of, of sizes three different bass drums, pretty much any size that you would possibly want. Again, made specifically for, uh, for Jeff Picard. There's a really cool Gretsch drum kit that the Rolling Stones rented uh, for Charlie Watts to use uh, in a video that was never actually... Uh, they, the video came out, but they didn't use the parts with Charlie Watts playing the set. So it's a set that uh, the Stones rented Charlie played in the video. It's identical to Charlie's Maple Gretsch set that you, he's been playing for decades. Um, and it's the one he used in this video. Unfortunately, it, uh, that the segments of him playing the set never uh, made the cut in the video. So there are dozens of snare drums, every one of them a field-tested, studio-tested, you know, hit record tested workhorse snare drum um, that, you know, Paul's put his touch on that uh, <clears throat> makes them just really be all amazing sounding drums. JMO was also known for a specific customization that he did on vintage Slingerland Radio King drums. He did a special combination of adjusting the snare beds adding cast hoops, and then refinishing the drums uh, to where he made the Paul Jamison snare drum. And I mean, this became like a secret weapon of studio drummers uh, all over the world. It was nothing that was ever made commercially, nothing that was ever picked up by you know one of the big drum companies. It was just something that, it was a modification, a customization that he would do and uh, that drum was legendary. I mean, that drum really created a vibe that uh, is still popular today. And uh, that snare drum uh, can be thanked for that. There's several uh, examples of that drum in many different sizes and configurations in the collection. JMO also kept his eyes out in his travels for really cool vintage drums and there's some really pretty amazing drums in there as well. You'll see a vintage Gretsch Cadillac Green Max Roach Piccolo. Don't see those every day. Uh, there's several uh, Black Beauties, not only the early engraved ones, but uh, 
1970s modern uh, black beauties. Now, in addition to drums, Paul also has a huge collection of other recording instruments. Uh, he has a Hammond B3 that uh, is used and actually signed by some of the greatest keyboard players of all time. Billy Preston, Booker T, just to name a few. Uh, he has an Ampeg B15 bass amp with a Fender bass that has been on countless recordings. Uh, this, this bass rig was like Mark Ronson, the producer Mark Ronson's go-to bass amp. Uh, this has been on uh, pretty much he doesn't record anything in Los Angeles without that bass and that amp. I mean, the bass amp is signed by like the who's who of bass players. Duck Dunn, Pino Palladino, Lee Sklar, uh, producer Mark Ronson, and, and several others. Uh, he's got a large collection of guitars uh, and uh, amplifiers. Uh, that have been used by countless famous guitarists on countless famous albums. There is a, a Fender amp, Keith Richards' go-to amp when he comes to Los Angeles. So Paul has decided to retire after about a 50-year career in the music industry. Uh, he's, it's, he's decided it's time to do something else. So he's moving on, but he very much wants to keep his drums and his instruments out there making music. So I've mentioned many of the drums you'll see, but you can see the entire collection on my website at Don Bennett's Drum Vault at donbennett.com. And so until we see you again, enjoy, keep drumming, have a great time, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.